They say, to become an expert in any field, it takes 10,000 hours. That's about 7 to 10 years of sustained practice. Nowadays, this theory is heavily contested, and for good reason. The main objection is that more time put in shouldn't necessarily equate to a higher skill. But that's obvious. We all know a player's skill doesn't just represent the amount of time put into practice. If that were the case, we'd recognize the winner of a tournament as the player who put in the most hours. Or we'd be calling out close games like, wow, player two just clutched that one out. He must have put in like two to five and a half more minutes of practice into his play than his opponent. I'm sure we can all agree that time put into practice matters, and the more you put in, the better. But it's the combination of time and high quality practice that produce the best results. Not all forms of practice are equal. So what makes some forms of practice better than others? How should you be practicing a skill? Any article debating the 10,000 hour rule will argue it is not so much about the time than it is about the way you practice, and that the data suggest the best form of practice is known as deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is the method of breaking down a skill to its very core set of subskills, which you can deliberately focus on one at a time. Psychologist Kay Anders Erickson, a professor of psychology at Florida State University, has been a pioneer in the research and establishment of deliberate practice, and his findings have essentially taken over the Wikipedia page on practice. Countless of works have been written attesting to this idea, such as Talent is Overrated by Jeff Colvin, The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth, and The Click Moment by Franz Johansson. The ideas behind this concept are simple. Without direct focus, you're essentially hoping to figure things out as you go. When playing friendlies without deliberate focus, you might notice areas to improve here and there. But more often than not, significant progress isn't made. When you do notice an area to improve, you'll fix it just enough to deal with your current opponent. Without deliberate focus, you never really take a skill from inadequacy all the way to mastery. On the other hand, there is the acknowledgement that human beings are terrible at multitasking. For example, if you're talking to someone and they're typing on their phone, they aren't really listening to you, sorry to say. I hope that doesn't ruin any of your relationships. Aside, trying to focus on multiple skills at once will greatly hinder the effectiveness. Robert Greene, in his book Mastery, states, you must avoid at all costs the idea that you could manage learning several skills at a time. You need to develop your powers of concentration and understand that trying to multitask will be the death of the process. We can conclude that practicing without any deliberate focus or practicing with deliberate focus on multiple sub-skills at once are two forms of low-quality practice. Robert Greene idealizes the ultimate craftsman, who masters each building process and possesses each skill to produce work of the highest standard. In fighting games, that high standard work would be your tournament gameplay. In general, no matter your field, you must think of yourself as a builder using actual materials and ideas. You are producing something tangible in your work, something that affects people in some direct, concrete way. To build anything well, a house, a political organization, a business, or a film, you must understand the building process and possess the necessary skills. You are a craftsman learning to adhere to the highest standards. For all of this, you must go through a careful apprenticeship. You cannot make anything worthwhile in this world unless you have first developed and transformed yourself. So that's the main idea. Focus on one subskill at a time and use these as your building blocks to produce the best gameplay possible. There's a few more details I want to get into, so expect a part two in the near future. Be sure to hit that DK thumbs up and smack that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Have a swell evening and I'll see you next time.